So to map the entities automatically, we will use AutoMapper and we have to of course install it first as a NuGet. So right click dependencies, manage NuGet packages and we are going to browse for AutoMapper. And here are two options. We have the AutoMapper and we have the AutoMapper extensions Microsoft.dependency injection. And this is actually the one we want. And that's because this one works very well with dependency injection. And plus, this one has the dependency on AutoMapper itself. So when this is installed, the AutoMapper will be added as well. So select the AutoMapper.extensions.microsoft.dependency injection. And the current stable version is 7.0.0. .0. I suggest you install this version as well to make sure that it is all compatible with our application. So let's just click install. And now it shows in our installed as well. So it was successfully installed, but we first need to register the service. So let's go to startup and let's add the auto mapper here. So here we can add another service and we are adding the auto mapper. Now in order to use this, we of course need to bring in the namespace, which is in auto mapper. That's our NuGet. Now it's still underlined because it needs some parameters. We need to pass in the assemblies as argument. And these are the assemblies that will automatically be scanned for profiles with mapping configurations. So in our case, we'll simply going to add all assemblies. So to do that, we'll go to our domain, which is the app domain dot and we'll get our current domain and then we will get all assemblies. And now our auto mapper is registered. But in order to use this, we now need to actually map our entities. So we need to map the band entity with the band DTO. So let's create profiles for that. Let's create another folder and I'll call it profiles. And in it, I'm going to add a class that I'll call bands profile. So in order for this to be a profile for the auto mapper, it needs to inherit from profile. So let's bring in the namespace. And again, it's from the auto mapper namespace. So now let's add the profile and we'll do it in a constructor. And here we will create a map. We will map the entity with the DTO. So the syntax is create map which will map those two entities together. And we want to map the entity for the band, which is in entities folder. So we have the band and we want to map it to our model, which is the band DTO. So it's in models folder dot band DTO. But remember, we don't have all the matching properties there in our DTO. We have this founded years ago, which is not part of the band. So we need to tell it how to map this. So we will add for member and the member that we want is this property founded years ago. So our destination is that property. So we will create a Lambda. So it's going to be the destination that founded years ago. That's the property on in our DTO. And here we will specify the option how to actually map it. So we are mapping from and the source for this is the concatenation of founded. So let's do the interpolation again. So it's going to be source dot founded. And it's formatted as a string with four digit year. And then we are concatenating the source for our extension method. And the extension method is for the founded dot 
get years ago. That's our extension method. So let's bring in the namespace for the extension method. And this is how our entity will be mapped. So it's going to be mapped exactly as we did it here. So this is our mapping. So we map the properties for our DTO. We have the ID and name and main genre. And for the member of founded years ago, we map it as a concatenation of the founded and the get years ago extension method. And just like we added over here the years ago as a text, we can actually do that as well over here. So we can put that in parentheses and say years ago. So this is the complete map as we manually added it here, except now it's going to be mapped through the auto mapper. So now let's go back to our controller and bring in the auto mapper. So over here we need a variable for our mapper. So it's going to be another private variable and it can be read only of type i mapper. And we need to bring in the namespace, which is of course the auto mapper. And I'll call it underscore mapper. And now we will inject the mapper into the constructor. Remember in our NuGet we installed the dependency injection mapper so we can inject it easily. We'll simply add it as an iMapper and I'll call it mapper. And just like we did for the repository, we'll add it here. So our mapper with the underscore will equal mapper, but we will do a null check again. If the mapper is null, we will return argument null exception. But of course the exception is coming from the mapper. So here we get the mapper. If it is null, we throw an exception. Otherwise we'll assign it to our underscore mapper. Except I just noticed over here it's supposed to be I mapper. Because that's the interface for our mapper that we are injecting into this constructor. And now let's go and implement the mapper in our get bands method. So instead of constructing the DTO manually like this, I'm going to comment this out. We can now apply the mapper. So over here, we can do it straight in our return statement. We will simply return OK. And we will return the band DTO mapped to our entity of band. So we'll go to our mapper and create the map. And the map we want is for the i enumerable of type band DTO. That's our return type. And the source of our mapping is, of course, the bands from repo. So now this should map all the properties from bands from repo to our band DTO. So we don't even need this list anymore and comment that one as well. All right, so let's run this and let's get all the bands. And the result should be the same as we had when we applied the DTO manually. And we get 200 OK and here are the bands and you can see everything is the same. We have the ID name founded years ago as a year and then how many years ago that was. All right, so the mapping is working correctly. And next, let's have a look at the child relationship between the bands and albums.